What's up, guys? MJP back again once again for another episode of our Pokemon Sword Type Lock. And here we are, we're going straight in with the battle against Pop. Um, we whittle down the Wudu with some Electro Balls and it goes down. The Reboot comes in, we stay in with the Joltik. Tank, a double kick, and then Bolt Switch out. Into Stutter. The reason why we didn't do the hot fight in the last episode was because we were getting your boy Stutter. Um, thankfully, it goes for a growl uh, at the first. Uh, no, it doesn't. It goes for flame charge. Sorry, my bad. It goes for flame charge. We tank one, get the bulldoze off. So now it's lowered speed. But unfortunately, Pop has to heal. Uh, and then uses Growl on our special Dotla, so we don't care about that. We hit up the Reflect just in case it comes in with the Flame Charge. Um, keeps on Growling, which we are perfectly fine with uh, in the Hardcore Rules. Not, we, no need to switch out or anything. Um, so we just go for some... <coughs> we just go for some Confusions. We tank Flame Charge relatively well uh, because of the Reflect. Confusions bring it down to the red yet again. And we get the Confusion, which is really nice. Leftovers brings us back up, allowing us to take another Flame Charge if needs be. Um, it actually it goes for another Growl, and then we take it out with Confusion. The Corvus Squire comes in. Uh, we stay in to get the Reflect up before switching out back into Joltik to hit the Electro Ball, which does decent damage, half health. Um, and we then finish it off with one Volt Switch. And the Corvus Squire goes down. And we win. We use the Jolly Mint on our Squover. So his attack stat is buffed. And then we get into Holbury and we, our fishing encounter is an Aracuda. I was kind of hoping for a Chinchow. Uh, but I'll definitely take an Aracuda. I used Barrascuda in my first ever... Um, saw a playthrough and it was really, really good. So I was perfectly fine with encountering an Aracuda. The only problem with it is it's a bit like a Alakazam, Weavile um, type encounter in the fact that it hits hard, but if it takes a hit, it's pretty much dead. Um, we weaken it down and then throw the Netball, which allows us to catch the Aracuda, which has a pretty bad nature yet again. We call it Pro Propel. Um, yeah, we, we haven't been getting very many good natures on our Pokemon in this uh, run through so far. Uh, so we've had to resort to the mints a lot of the time. We then make it to the second gym. Um, in which should be fairly straightforward. Uh, I decided to take in the Squirrel and on our way to Nessa, it does indeed evolve into Greedent, uh, which means Cheek Pouch is going to be even better as well. We complete the gym mission. Uh, and we head into the corridor where we pull up the team that's going to be taking on Nessa. She has three Pokemon, so I decide to bring, obviously, the Joltik, Roselia, and the newly evolved Greedent. Uh, she sends out Goldeen first. We, we lead Joltik because of the Volt Switch. 
um, which is just going to be very useful. Uh, and it's pretty much faster than most of the Pokemon she has. So, yeah, def definitely a good shout to start with the Joltik. One Electro Ball brings it down to 1 HP, which is kind of annoying. Uh, as with the Agility, it will probably be faster, but we do manage to take it out after taking a hit. The Aracuda comes in, has priority moves, uh, which we don't mind. I decided to go for the Volt Switch now because it kills the Aracuda, and then we can bring in Roselia for the Dreadnought, which is going to be coming in. We get four times effective damage with the Mega Drain, which is okay. It brings us back up, but we are not safe from another hit, so we have to swap into Greedon to prevent Rosie going down. Um, Greedon actually has pretty good defense, so I'm not too worried about that. I think we're holding an Orange Berry at the time as well. We do get critted by the Max Strike, which is unfortunate. But Orange Berry, and then here we have the Cheap Pouch ability, which is really, really good for us, which allows us to take probably another two hits as its Dynamax is coming down, obviously. We can't use Dynamax as I put that in our rules at the beginning. So Dynamax does run out. We've got the Body Sand Paralysis on it, uh, which should allow us to outspeed. So we switch back in to Rosie because a hit from the Dreadnought, from the non Dynamax Dreadnought, will not kill us and we will outspeed in the next turn. So we swap back in. To just ensure that nothing happens. I think he gets powered on that turn anyway, and we finish it off with a Mega Drain, uh, leading to another Deathless Gym Battle, which is super, super good for us. Nice indeed. Dude, dude. Um, so yeah, we get the gym badge, the second gym badge, we shake hands with Nessa, and we prepare to move on in the game. So yeah, so, so far so good, uh, the encounters haven't been too bad, uh, for us. I think that's partially what was good about this series, is that we were able to sort of manipulate the encounters a little bit, so it, it needed more research as well. So here we have the Bead Galar Mine 2 fight. I decided to go with the light screen straight away just because I know the Dotler can resist most of the moves that this thing's going to throw at us. And last time we faced him, he did have Endeavor as well. So I didn't want to fall into that trap straight away. Um, so I went for the light screen. Struggle Bug then took it out. Gathita comes in with Rock Tomb, which was kind of scary because I had no idea it had Rock Tomb. Um, so we were, we were quite slow at this point, but two struggle bugs did manage to take out the Gathita. Then Galarian Ponytar comes in, we swap to Greedent, and two bites manage to take out the Ponytar because it's not a fairy type until uh, it becomes Rapidash. Light screen's still up, so we're taking the special moves as well, which is uh, just allowing us to sit here and eat hits. Um, Hatena comes in, side beam. Again, light screen still up at this point, so we're not taking too much damage. Orange Berry and Cheek Pouch activate. And then bring us quite a long way back into full. We go for the bite and take the Hatena out. And that is the end of the bead fight again. Uh, gain a level on Golet, which is going to be useful because the fire type starter which hop has is still our biggest problem we then make it out of galar mine 2 and into most soak outskirts i believe and we encounter a rod and roller um smackdown does decent damage to my dot last so uh i'm pretty sure i swap out and we then try and catch the rock and roller because this will be good for the next gym as well being fire type um 
So yeah, we chuck a dust ball because it was night time uh, in the internal game clock. Uh, it's not a fantastic nature, but it's it could be worse. Um, weak armor, likewise, isn't a great ability, uh, but we we definitely take it. We get hit by a sucker punch in our far, in our first Marnie fight, but one confusion does indeed take the Krogunk out. Uh, the one roller also came with a hard stone, which was quite nice. We swapped to the Joltic. Uh, for the Scraggy, and just hit it with a couple of Electro Balls, uh, and that takes it out. We then swap to the Greedent uh, against the more Pico, and then we hit the Body Slam onto the more Pico a, a few times to knock it out. Uh, leading to quite an easy Marnie fight. The rival fights aren't particularly difficult. Uh, Greedent wants to learn rest, but with the berry and cheek pouch, we don't really need that. So, after that fight, we do some grinding on Atmos, uh, who evolves into Baldor, and I subsequently uh, evolve it again into the Gigalith. Uh, so a very quick succession, and we can actually do that with the uh, level cap for the fire gym, and it also allows us to evolve our propel into a barrow scooter, which is going to give us so much more attacking power. Uh, obviously, I have to catch a Pokemon in the fire type gym. Uh, I tried to do it without catching one time, and it just kept on saying you have four points, four points, four points. So you do actually have to catch one. Uh, so I catch a Sizzlepede, name it Not My Fire. Um, and then, yeah, for the rest of the team, we have Golet, uh, Gigalith, and Barrascuda to take on Carbu. Uh, we heal up Golet before the battle with our multitude of orange berries. Uh, and as you can see, we have the stab items on all of our Pokemon as well. We lead with the Barrascuda because I know that his Pokemon do burn a lot. We go for the priority Aqua Jets to see how much it can do. And it does over half, which is decent, but we do get burnt, which is kind of annoying because uh, that is going to half our attack stat. Um, which really doesn't help us out. Uh, another Aquajet takes the Nine Tails out, though. We then come in against the Arcanine. We go for a dive as it goes for agility, which means that it then misses the bite as well, which is really, really useful. Uh, we are taking lots of chip damage with the burn, though, now, which is annoying. Uh, so we swap out into Atmos, who gets burnt. Uh, brings a Sandstorm out, though. Takes a fire bang, but a couple of smackdowns, and the Arcanine falls. Atmos, however, has to go down, unfortunately. Um, it was a, a necessary sacrifice for, for the run. Um, everything else was, was damaged, uh, and it allowed the safe switch in into Barrascuda, where we could go for the dive. Um, and after Sandstorm damage to the Center Scorch, we could take it out and win the third gym. Unfortunately, not Deathless this time. We did have a casualty in Atmos, which was kind of annoying because Atmos is a very, very good defensive Pokemon, but it did open up some more encounters to us. So we go, we head straight to, oh no, this is, this is Multistoke Outskirts, isn't it? I think. I don't know, I've got everything, I've got, I've got the places wrong, but we catch a Corvus Squire uh, in Motostoke Outskirts. I'm pretty sure this one is. Uh, I'm trying to remember where the, where the Rock and Roller one is. It's just outside... 
uh, Galar Mine, isn't it? I can't remember what all that one's called. Uh, but it is actually a very good uh, nature for us. Oh no, this is a riverbank, the other one's outskirts. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Corvus Quiet is actually a very good nature. We head up into Bridgefield and we encounter a feeble and uh, it wasn't really what I was looking for. I was kind of hoping for a Sneasel um, or an another ice type. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but we were looking for a sneeze or an ice type, so I decided to run from the feeble. We then head to Giant's Mirror, I believe, where we find a coughing, which is actually a very good encounter for this game. Galarian Weezing is uh, is a bit like a Lola Muck, a very very good poison type Pokemon. Um, can take hits a lot. Uh, very decent nature to be fair on on the coffin which we call fuma uh, levitate as well is going to be very good for us we then head to hamlock hills and we encounter an NK instead of a, a sneasel or an ice type yet again um so i do decide to just run eventually uh after 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 trying to anyway we run from the NK uh because it's not what I was wanting uh, and I just decided to leave the encounters there um, during our run to the fourth gym we actually get our orbital because the level cap is now somewhere uh, in the in the mid 30s I think uh, so we get orbital which is really nice uh, a bit more power and in routes Six, not six, it, yeah, six, route six, we find Anthaldodoran, uh, decent nature, obviously it has the hustle ability which can be a problem, uh, but yeah, not too bad, we then, <laughs> we then run into Hop yet again, uh, he has a completely different team, we start with Joltik to fight the Cramorant, uh, which I'm hoping we can just kill in one hit. However, we don't actually outspeed. So we go for the Volt Switch and we manage to kill it with the Quad Effective. Uh, and it allows us to swap out as well for the next one without taking a hit, which is really nice. Uh, so Sandaconda comes in. I obviously swap into someone bad. Uh, I can't remember who off the top of my head. But yeah, we swap into Barrascula to take on the Sandaconda. We go for the dive. Um, and we take out the... Uh, not the Sandaconda, the City Cobra, sorry. Uh, and we take that out quite easily. Toxel comes in, so I go for the Iron Defense to start setting up uh, for the Reboot, which I know is coming out. I know this thing can't do too much damage to us. So I'm fine with taking the Acids, and I know that Reboot has physical fire type moves, which helps us out. We go for the Bulldoze after getting plus two, which instantly destroys the Toxel with its very weak defense stat and quad weakness to ground. We then, the Reboot then comes in, and we go for a big Stomping Tantrum after it throws with Agility. Um, I don't know why that the AI in this game is is very confusing sometimes. Um, but one stomping tantrum does indeed take it out. Gives us some nice experience before the gym, and we do a bit of grinding before the fourth gym so that we can level up our coughing into the mighty Galarian Weezing. Uh, Mar reaching his final stage. Uh, leaving our team looking like this, we did have the first death, unfortunately. But yeah, until next episode, guys. Peace.